we do see something. Where's he? Oh, there he is. There he is. Yay! We do see something. So, right. Can you so, give the font size, please. The font size. Better? Fast, yeah. I think it's for right. everyone, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so in the end, so the thing is Mike, that Mike. Um, originally, the original design of libATA was that libATA could be used standalone without ever recurring to the SCSI subsystem. And, um, but then, as it was quite complicated, th they added a SCSI, inter a SCSI layer in between such that all commands are actually coming in via the SCSI layer. This was primarily due to, to facilitate the use of ATAPI devices, meaning CD-ROMs, which, es which in essentially had been using SCSI CDBs internally already uh, all the time. So, so meaning that the sole user of libATA really is SCSI. There is no other user. And it turns out that it's getting more and more um, cumbersome trying to um, separate those two out, especially due to the work that John Gary did for updating LibSARS, because LibSARS can also recur to libATA. And um, so it always gets, uh, gets us into issues and some weird pointer usage to figure out, right, is this a SCSI command? Is this an ATI command? What is it now we're dealing with? So um, the proposal is to give up the pretension that we could ever use libATA without the SCSI interface and more, uh, tight, more tightly couple both of them such that we don't have the, notion, the, the problem that we can't call SCSI functions within a, a libATA. Case in point here is that one, We're, because if we uh, so if we were doing that, we could put the ATA specific things, that's the ATA, ATA Q command, as the payload of the SCSI command. That's what you see here, what this would entail to. So we would always allocate a SCSI request, uh, a strike request, and a SCSI command for all ATA commands. So that would be helpful because that would mean that also the internal commands would show up in the um, as busy commands. Currently, the internal commands are allocated internally and will, and will never ever show up in the um, in the tag map of the request or of the request queue. With that, they will show up, and we can use iterators when um, walking the list of outstanding commands. Again, quite helpful. So, the problem is this ominous internal tag. So the libATA has the notion of an internal tag, which is being used for sending internal commands. This tag is tag number 32 of 31 available tags. No, there, there are 32 available tags. It's number 33 or value 32. It's actually not yeah, okay, a tag. So, you have, you have a so, the, so yeah, to be precise, it's, yeah, call, yeah. it's called a tag without being a tag. Yeah, exactly. So essentially, you have a queue depth of 32 starting from zero, and you allocate tag number 32. So meaning that one beyond the actual queue depth. The reason why this one works is that those internal commands are not queued. So again, an ATA, ATA speci speciality. The ATA can use tag commands, but these are dis the commands themselves are distinct from the normal commands. So there are commands and there are tag commands. And those commands which are non-tag don't obviously don't require a tag, but also for those, we don't need to wait for any tag to become free because they are the only commands which are outstanding on the queue at that time. And that is also why this one here works. So if the SCSI alloc request is being called, it, it will be for an internal tag, which will be 
had to be checked, but the assumption is that they will, that they will be non-queued, and therefore the queue always will be free by the time you're sending the command. And in case of error here, we need a big fat warning, because that should not happen. In case of an error, can we get into the situation where an error happens and the queue is full? Well, the queue is full means that you send 32 so that in CQ commands. So that all tags are busy and the and we get an error, we can't. No, no, no. So the, the queue is full means that you send 32 in CQ commands and yes. if one of them fails, uh, you get them back all the in your lap uh, because no, 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 you no. get a queue abort on ATA. Who's, whose queue is full? The, the, the drive queue. Drive queue. The, re the ATA drive or the... Yeah, the yeah ATA drive. I mean ATA that drive. has a fixed number of queue slots. Yes. Constant. Yeah. That's so what we're saying, 32 at most. I don't understand the question. It, it's, so um, the, uh, the problem is that we don't want that SCSI alloc request to fail for an internal command, which is a non-queued command. And the assumption, of course, is that when you issue that command, you don't have any NCQ command ongoing, so nothing queued on the drive. And that's the reason why that call to alloc request shouldn't fail, because you don't have any uh, command ongoing. The problem, though, is that uh, most of the time we enter, this, we start issuing internal commands to either recover from a failed NCQ command or because we're scanning the drive. If we're scanning or, or revalidating the drive, we're reading a bunch of log pages and we are in error, co uh, error recovery context to prevent NCQ commands in Libetia. So nothing is going on, the drive is essentially idle, that's going to work. The problem is uh, in the situation where you send 32 tag command to the drive, the drive queue is full, you can't send anything uh, more. One of those fail, you get back, to you, you get a, an ATA queue abort, so all the commands. You get back um, all 32 f with a failure. Yeah, but the 32 uh, commands are using a SCSI request. So now what happens to this one when you want to allow that internal command to go and read, uh, uh, get the sense data to, to know which one failed, and get the drive out of error state, you need that internal command and that but, th but that one can fail. Yeah. Damien, this is what the reserved tags are for, right? No. Well, no, specifically no, for error handling. No. No. With the current implementation, yes, because we actually have 32, 33 right, QCs. Right, but I'm saying... But that, that one would No, but let, let me finish. So block and queue has a notion of a reserved tag. Right? Yes. When you set up a tag set, you say my depth is 32 and I would like one reserved tag, right? You reserve this reserved tag for error handling purposes, right? That's why it exists. So you can never, this would need to dip into the reserve pool. Um, since you can't have these queued anyway, you can't have like multiple error operations going at the same time. But if the drive and normal tag set is full, right, you still have your reserve tag and that's what you use it for. And for this case, it's fine, right? Because you don't care about the actual tag, obviously, so. since yeah. it's outside of the bounds. Yeah. You just need to be able to allocate a request that's specifically for error handling, which is what that is. Okay. Then, then we're good. Um, so sure. I can use reserve tag. Okay. Yeah, because. But it, that means. But you don't have any more outstanding commands in the drive. Once you get an error, every single command is failed out yes, of the drive. Yes, it is. Logically, it is failed. So exactly. So the thing is, logically, they are failed, but they're still marked busy, internal in the host OS. Yeah. The. the Meaning we uh, we can't and we can't allocate a new command because all the tags are still nominally busy in the host. And in order to recover anything, we would need to send whatever, read log, read log page, something like blah, blah, before we know the status of these commands. They all will be failed, clearly, for the, um, in the ATA case. But we still would need to recover the data and would need to have an additional step for freeing up the tags. Am I correct, Jens? Yeah, no, that you're right. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah. How so it works. you just need so. the request is just a placeholder, right, to be able so to talk to the. So meaning, I I have your okay to have an to update the SCSI layer to have internal tags. Oh yeah. It's the, okay. Right. It's muted. Well, As I, it's actually, happened, yes. I think I mean that's that's how you would do the error handling, and I fully support the notion of getting rid of this. I mean, okay. I think that the the idea of uh, just separating or having LibATA be separate from SCSI, right, is maybe an old pipe dream these yeah. days. It's so far from reality. Yeah. Just embrace it. Get rid of this uh, yeah. private array of things and yeah. just set up your queue depth of 32 with one reserve tag. 
Uh, okay. And if SCSI well, doesn't support do. that, yeah, then yeah. you would need to mm -hmm. have a little bit of yeah. SCSI surgery. Uh, I yeah. can't speak to that, but for sure, this this would be the canonical way of achieving this goal. So okay. that should be the way to do it. Good, cool. Um, John, but now the question to you. Yeah. That would mean C that... Uh, can yeah. you show the... I think I can. Ah, well. So just, I don't mean to be pedantic, but do you have a Scully, Scuzzy Alec request AP to Scuzzy Q, I regret, I so assume that is, what right? This Sorry? Wha what this does is that essentially got, it gets rid of one of the pointers in the SAS task, that's the ULDD task. So with that, we can get rid of that pointer because then the ULDD task will always point to a Scuzzy command. It would also mean, unfortunately, that we would always allocate a, uh, an ATA queue command even for real SAS commands. Okay, just something I've run into a problem is that when you initially try to send uh, ATA internal commands, you don't have a SCSI device available yet today, today that is. And without that, you don't have a request queue, so you can't really alloc a internal command for yep. a SCSI device which doesn't exist yet. Um, for SARS, you mean? For, for all right, for discovery? Yeah. Okay. Right, okay, so no, um, this is so, primarily this is, if you listen close, is for the ATA stack. Right. So this is for our, um, QC, issue, QC, QC issue type things. Yeah. I don't think you need um, QC issue for the initial SARS discovery, do you? Well, when it's standing the initial internal commands, you need, in what you're doing here, you need a request queue, and yep. the obvious one would be the SCSI device request queue, which, when you're doing the inquiry or discovery, isn't available yet, yep. which so is a problem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, but this is, a, is I think it's a d different problem because th this is, again, just for ATA now. Yeah. So we would always allocate the ATA structure for the SCSI command, even though it's a, a SARS. Sorry, say that again, you'll al also always alloc the what, sorry? 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 You said you'll always alloc the SCSI. Yeah. Well. So now the thing is that for, for SARS tasks, yeah. um, it would mean that all SARS tasks will always have a bit of an additional space in the command structure, which refers to the a ATA command, even though it might be a real SARS task, which doesn't have an ATA one. Yeah, fine. So Look, the point it's I'm slightly trying to make wasteful for SARS in this case. The point I'm just trying to make today is the problem that you've got an ordering issue that you don't have. If you want to send a internal command, you don't have a SCSI device yet with the request queue, so. Yes. Okay, that's all I'm saying. So yeah, but this is, uh, this is also something which I hope to resolve by more tightly integrating because that means I ca actually can refer for, uh, to the SCSI device even from lib ATA. Currently I can't because lib ATA is not supposed to know that there is a SCSI command, uh, is, uh, that there is a SCSI device, which really is a bit bonkers. So um, okay. if we were able to refer uh, directly to the SCSI device from lib ATA, we would get rid of that one. Okay. Damien, anything to add? Yeah, no, I, ju I just need to see code. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, yeah, the <coughs> Jens, uh, Jens idea of the result tag is probably the easiest. Yeah, all Th right. That matches what, what exists today with the, the internal uh, uh, QCC and the array, which we can get rid of. Yeah, but it, uh, but it also means that um, if we need to send NCQ commands via internal uh, internal NCQ commands, we would need to have a special flag such that we can use the tag allocated. Because for NCQ commands, you actually do need to use the tag allocated. Uh, so re uh, read log, the classic one, read log, read log NC, uh, NCQ, that needs to go via. Well, right, the now <coughs> right now, nobody is using that, so that there's no such code. Really? Uh, I, I actually need to add it for, for some stuff, but in that case, for for commendation limits for for recovery, I My need an NCQ read log. I'm pretty sure I added the code at one point. Uh, no, read log doesn't go. Does it? I haven't seen the packing into NCQ command for read log okay. anywhere. Right. Whatever. So if, if I, if I if may, it I miss it, but uh, it, it I will don't work think if we only ever send um, non-NCQ commands via, via the internal one. Yep. So yeah, we have to check. Okay. Right. So the next question really is then, which my work is stuck on, is what to do next with the internal command. Well, 
just got the okay that I can do it. So okay. meaning that I can at least, uh, I can add the necessary infrastructure so that the SCSI layer can use internal, uh, can use reserve commands. Currently, there is no infrastructure for you, allowing you even to allocate and to specify that. So um, that would be the first step to get in the infrastructure so that, such that the SCSI device can use or that uh, they can't use internal, uh, internal tax or re the reserve tax. Okay, so wh what I was really saying was that uh, normally when once you allocate the internal tag, you uh, call issue QC, which uh, in the case of AHCI, I assume it sends directly to the hardware, but if you've got a SAS uh, has, uh, stack, uh, that needs to be handled directly by the yeah, hardware as well. Exactly. In the SaaS case, I really have to look that. It's, it sounds a bit odd what SaaS does there. So I really have to check how this ties together. Because it's um, for internal commands, they are being sent via SaaS and then back to QC. And then I'm getting confused. What do you do if you send an ATA internal command? Will this also go back via? So ugh, I have to. Right. Uh, I was wondering if Jans has any idea on that. Because today, if, if you just alloc the SCSI request, all it just does is uses it as a placeholder. Yeah. And that's it. And yeah. as the work I was doing, the idea was to try and send that through the block layer, which is quite problematic. Yep. All right. Good. Let's see where we end up when trying to do so. But at least, the, so the internal tax, the internal tax allocation will be the first step. And then we can build upon that how we can update the one and the other driver to actually use it. So the first ATA will possibly be the first one because that really makes sense to get rid of this internal tag stuff. And um, we also will be able to get rid of the tag pointer in the QC itself because, well, we can just infer it from the SCSI command as there's always now a SCSI com command attached to it. Well, so you, uh, yeah, you need to add the back pointer to the SCSI command from QC or Well, then there's a back pointer. You just uh, container off. I mean, yeah. it's, it's right. embedded. Yeah. You don't need the back pointer anymore. Yes, yes. So that's the good thing. So it actually shortens down on the structures. So beneficial all around. Okay. Anyone, anything more to add?